Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going over mathematical knowledge on the ASVAB military placement exam. I have 10 practice problems here to give you an idea of what they look like. I'd highly recommend if you have your notebook out, pencil with you, you take some notes, that helps retain the information. Pause the video before the problem, before I do the problem, you do it, unpause the video and watch how I do it. You can't really learn how to juggle by watching me, you gotta practice, and that's exactly the same with math. You gotta do some practice for it to make sense and sink in. You're only good at something that you practice a lot of. So before we get started on this 10 problem practice test, let me just talk about the two different sections, arithmetic reasoning versus the mathematical knowledge section. In arithmetic reasoning, it's really about your ability to read, decode words and solve kind of real world scenarios. So it's a lot more practical. If you have a pretty good reasoning skill and pretty good word decoding, you could do okay on the arithmetic reasoning portion of the exam. But the mathematical knowledge exam tests how much math you kind of retain from traditional high school math class. So if it's been a while since you've done any high school math, seeing how to solve equations, seeing exponent square roots, uh, Pythagorean theorem, some of those things, then you probably need to study a little bit more to refresh those ideas. So the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB exam is a lot more traditional high school math, solve for X kind of problems. Arithmetic reasoning is really how well you could decode a paragraph into an equation and then use your math reasoning skills to solve those problems. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into 10 mathematical knowledge problems. We'll start right here, solving for X. Pause the video, do the problem, unpause the video, watch how I solve it. So what we're doing here is we are solving for X. That means we have to get that X, a variable, all by itself. First thing I need to do is subtract 6 from it. That's going to give me 4X. 6 minus 6, the so 6's are gone. I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I keep it in balance. How I keep it in balance is I do the same thing to both sides. So I also have to subtract 6 from that 31. 31 minus 6 is 25. At this point right here, I'm going to look over to my answers. Um, it is kind of jumping out at me that this is probably the correct one because 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times a quarter is 1 to give me 25. So the correct answer is C. I could do that by looking at my answers. If I wanted to solve this, I could divide both sides by 4. These would cancel. X is by itself. 25 divided by 4. 4 goes into 25 6 times, giving me 24. Bring down the 1. This could be a fraction 1 fourth, so it is 6 and a quarter, or the decimal equivalent, 6.25. Okay, problem number two, a rate problem. Very common on the ASVAB mathematical knowledge. A car travels at a constant speed 60 miles per hour. How far will it travel in two and a quarter hours? Well, I need to do 60 times 2.25 miles per hour. Um, but let's see, let me just do 60 times two, 120. So it's got to be more than 120, so I could cross that one out. Now I need to do a quarter times 60. Well, half of 60 is 30. Half of 30 is 15. So a quarter of 60 is 135. Correct answer, answer C. So what I did here is I did it in two multiplication problems. I figured out 2 times 60 to get 120. Then I did a quarter times 60 to get the 15. Added the 2 and the quarter together to give me 135 miles. Okay, remember, uh, pause the video, do the problems before I do them. Simplify the expression. An equation has an equal sign in it. You can do whatever you want to both sides. An expression does not have an equal sign, so I'm just doing operations. As I look at this problem, I can tell what I need to do is order of operations. What I do to remember order of operations is I do my parentheses first, then my exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, 
addition, subtraction from left to right. So that's a way to remember it, PEMDAS. So first thing I need to do are my parentheses. I have that three out front. Five plus two is seven, minus 10 divided by two. Now that I've done my parentheses, there are no exponents. I gotta do my multiplication and division next from left to right. So three times seven is 21. I am not doing addition and subtraction yet. 10 divided by two is five. I've done all my multiplication and division from left to right. I am now doing my addition and subtraction from left to right, 21 minus five, 16. Correct answer, answer C right there. Okay, moving right along to number four. Uh, what is the area, this is the key word, of a square with a side of seven feet? One tick mark is feet, two tick marks are inches. The check is, are you gonna add up four seven skip perimeter? That's not what it's asking you for, it is asking you for area. So it is actually base area times height. Seven times seven is 49 feet times feet is square feet. Correct units are square feet. Correct answer, answer D right there. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing or becoming a member, have some member benefits. You get earlier access to the videos and some member only videos. I also have a book called Math Test Success. There's a link in the description. You could buy that book. Uh, I have a set of videos, 25 videos to go along with that book. Uh, so I'll go through that book with you, very similar to this, but it's broken down to all of the math you need for basic uh, ASVAB algebra skills. Okay, number five, a shirt is on sale for 25% off its original price of 48. Sales tax is 6%. That's a separate problem. So let's just figure this out first. 25% off of 48. I can multiply that out or I could say, I have 48, half of 48 is 24, there's a half, 12 is half of a half or a quarter, it is one quarter off, so 12 is the amount off, so I do 48 minus 12 to give me 36. So a shirt is on sale for 25% off, which was $12 off of 48, so the shirt is $36. That's problem number one. Problem number two, the sales tax is 6%. So I gotta take 6% and add it to there. Before I do that, let me just look at my answers. I know it's not 36. It is just a little bit more than 36, 6% more. 10% more would be $3 more, but it's about half that. It's about $1.50, $2 more. Only answer that's gonna work is answer D right here. If I wanted to multiply that out and get the exact answer, I would take that 6%, convert it to a decimal. I think of this thing as an arrow shooting it over one, two places. So 6% is 0.06. I'm gonna put that 0 0.06 under the 36. That's gonna give me the tax. Six times six, 36. Carry the three, 18, 21. The decimal place is over one, two. Decimal place is over one, two. I'm gonna pay $2.16 in tax. $2.16 on the 36 gives me the exact value of 38.16. Uh, I'm just showing you some shortcuts because it is a no calculator test and it is timed. Okay, let's keep going. Another algebra problem. This is also kind of two problems in one. If 3x minus 5 equals 10, what is the value of this? So it's a, it's a tricky one. This one is deliberately set up so you can't plug the values in. Because so I'm not asked for x, I'm asked for 2x plus 7. So we're going to have to solve this equation here. It is two problems in one solve here first. I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get 3x is equal to 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to 5. I have that value for x. Now I'm ready to do the second problem. That 5 goes in here. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 7, 17. Correct answer, answer D. So again, first problem is solve for x. 
Second problem is take that value of x, plug it in there. All right, moving right along, number seven. Shirt is on sale for 22% off its original price of 40 bucks. So what is the sale price of the shirt? Right away, I could see this doesn't make sense. That might be the, the amount off, which is probably a good idea to get, get you started here. Um, but let me find out how much 20% is. So I'm going to split this percentage into 20%. And 2%. They're going to be the same with just a change in decimal places. 20% of 40 is $8, right? 0.2 times 40, 4 times 2 is 8, move it over. So 20% is 4. Well, this is 0.02%. Well, it's going to be the same thing with the decimal place pushed over once. So it's going to be the $8 plus 80 cents. So together you have $8 and 80 cents off. Well, that's not, it's not answer A, and I, I crossed that out deliberately because I feel like I did all this work, got the right answer. But it is saying, what is the sale price? So I have to do the 40, 0, 0, minus the 880 to get the 31.20. Only one that's going to end in a two is right here, so it has to be answer C. I could borrow from here, make this a three, make this a 10. Borrow from this, make this a nine, make this a 10. And then I have 100 cents minus 80 cents, gives me 20 cents. Nine minus eight is one, and I have 3120, correct answer, answer C. Sometimes those shortcuts come to you if you do enough practice, sometimes you don't see them. And you got to do that out, and that's great. But wherever you could pick up a little extra time, you want to use those shortcuts. Okay, number eight. Got another algebra equation. Very classic kind of mathematical knowledge, ASVAB, or even the AFOQT exam as well. You need to get my variable y. No difference between a y and x, just an unknown. By itself, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. That's going to give me y over 3 by itself those have canceled, is equal to 9 minus 5, 4. One ratio equal to another ratio is a proportion. This is the same thing as 4 over 1. I could cross multiply. This times this, y times 1 is just y, is equal to this times this, is equal to 3 times 4, or 12. Correct answer, answer C right there, 12. Okay, only a couple more problems right here. I have a couple of values for A and B. I'm going to take those values and plug them in. There's a secret here, not a secret, but the trick is don't forget order of operations. So I take that A, plug it right in there. I take that B, plug it right in there. So I have 2 times A. Well, I'm saying A is 5 squared minus 3 times that value of B. I've got to do my exponents before multiplication. So 5 squared is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. 50 minus 3 times 3. 50 minus 9. 41. Uh-oh, pen's failing. 41. Correct answer. Answer C right here. Last problem. Again, if you need a channel, uh, subscribe, support the channel, and then check out my book if you want to do a lot more of this. A recipe calls for five parts flour, five parts flour to two parts sugar. If you use six cups of sugar, how many cups of flour? So I have one ratio equal to another. I have five flour to two sugar. How many flour to how many sugar? Well, this isn't too hard because I could go, well, how many, how did I get here? I multiplied this by three. So I also have to multiply this by 3 as well. 5 times 3 is 15. These ratios are equivalent, meaning that they have the same value. Um, and I just got there by figuring out this multiple. So 15 is the number of cups I need. All right, well, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any comments, please post them or any questions or thoughts, post them in the comments. I'll try and do my best to answer them. 
Thank you for watching.